over a year of designing, building and as usually some problems. An incredibly enjoyable building process, it all comes down to this video, to the final test of IndieMill. Time to finally test the indie mill, see what it can mill and how it can mill it. And finally release the DXF files, parts list and some other stuff completely for free. But I also thought that I will make an instruction, very detailed instruction with nice assembly drawings, with everything that you need to know in order to assemble the indie mill. And I will sell such instructions for just $10, there is a link in the description. And to be honest, you don't really need this instruction to build the indie mill. You can actually make it just by following my videos and taking a look at my webpage, theindustry.cc. You can build it totally for free, you don't have to buy the instruction, but if you feel like it, if you want to have a nice PDF file that you can put on your phone, on your computer, you can even print it and have it on the paper next to you while building the machine and at the same time support my work, this channel and my future projects, there is a link in the description. That's it for commercial announcements. And now before we'll get to milling, I actually have to finish some stuff on the indie mill uh, that is attaching the electronics box to the CNC table and of course the cable management. Attaching the electronics case was super easy, there is nothing more to say about that, but cable management itself was kind of interesting because I used a 3D printed cable chain in order to manage all of the cables on the indie mill. It took me like 16 hours to print the wool cable chain for the indie mill, but I think it was totally worth it. Of course, I used some other stuff for the cable management, including zip ties, because those are always useful. Compared to Dremel CNC, we have a huge improvement in cable management. It looks great, it works great, I am 100% happy with the result. Okay, enough of useless talking, I hope you are still watching. The first thing that I will mill is a wooden bowl. You may recognize it because I made a few of these on the Dremel CNC and I thought it would be a great way to start with the indie mill. So I prepared a piece of old pallet wood because I have a lot of that. I firmly attached it to the wasteboard of the indie mill and I press start for the very first time on my new CNC machine. Milling went smoothly without any problems, even though I tried to experiment with RPMs of the motor by lowering it just a little bit to see what will happen. I could definitely use a bigger depth of cut and higher feed rate. The surface finish on the outside is pretty decent, but on the inside it is not that great and that's mainly because I'm using an improper bit. For that I should use a straight cut milling bit or the other type that you recommend in the comments. Thanks a lot for that. I already bought them, but I'm waiting for shipping. And of course, I was able to machine this thing a lot faster than on Dremel CNC. Time for thing number two. A huge keyring with industry on the top. And for that, I will again use pallet wood and also a really interesting, very small milling bit, single foot, one millimeter in diameter. It will be really interesting to see how the machine will perform with such small milling bit. Later, I'm going to replace this milling bit with something bigger for the contour cut.
such milling bit is perfect for small little details on your workpiece and it works great. The problem is that those letters are so small that I am afraid that I will destroy them while post-processing this wood is very soft. Uh, so I already destroyed the Y. I don't really want to post-process that anymore because I will probably destroy it totally. Overall, the result is great. And again, I could go faster with the feed rate and deeper with the depth of cut. Object number three, industry label or logo, 40 centimeters wide and I painted the top of it black so that we'll have actually black letters on the top and clear wood on the bottom. I will use four foot, four millimeter milling bits so I had to change the collet inside the spindle. And also I decided to go slightly more aggressive with feed rate and depth of cut. When you mill wood like this, you always need some post-processing, but after that, it is perfect. You all have been waiting for that, time for aluminum. This is just a very quick design of something that I need for one of my future projects. It will be made out of 4mm thick sheet of aluminum and I will mill it with 3.175 milling bit, single foot of course, the same milling bit that I used on the Dremel CNC. So I just set up everything on the Indie Mill and in Fusion 360 and I click start. First milling on the indie mill was successful but wasn't as great as I would like it to, so I changed some settings in Fusion 360 and instantly tried again. And I broke the milling bit, so I tried again. And I broke another milling bit. So I tried again and this time a piece of aluminum stick to the end of the milling bit. So it's just useless now and we can say that I broke another third milling bit actually. So what was the problem? I actually thought that I'm milling too fast, but it turns out that I'm milling too slowly and that was the problem. In aluminum, it is just as bad when you mill slow or when you mill too fast. And it's hard to distinguish when you actually mill too slow or when you mill too fast. And also the milling bit itself is very inexpensive and I just thought that, you know, the quality is probably not the best. So I will try something different, something bigger. The first milling with new big milling bit was successful and we already have a better result than the first milling with small milling bit. 
So I decided to measure stuff, you know, change some settings in Fusion 360 and try it again. And this time, the first time of milling this piece out of aluminum, we have a pretty, pretty nice result and the dimensional accuracy is almost perfect. When you compare the surface finish on the first piece to the second piece, the second piece is of course already a lot better, but the third one is just the best. And the dimensional accuracy, it is almost perfect. I still have to experiment a little bit more with aluminum and my new machine and maybe some different metals because why not, but as for now, let's jump to the last thing that I milled on the indie mill. Actually, it's not the last thing because I also milled some numbers, one, two, three, and I shared that on my Instagram as a countdown to the release of this video. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, that's me on Instagram. And now to the last thing that I milled on the indie mill. I really like this one. This will be an Arduino case made out of pallet wood and acrylic. I already milled acrylic on the Dremel CNC in the past and it is not really that hard, quite easy compared to aluminum, but you have to be careful because it is also quite easy to melt acrylic. So with proper feed rates, it is super easy to mill acrylic and you can get pretty decent results, especially on a machine like this one. Obviously wood was easy to mill, acrylic also kind of easy to mill, sometimes a little bit stressful because the machine produces some weird sounds while milling acrylic, but overall I'm extremely happy with my unique, my own design of the Arduino case. It's great. If you want to get the file, you can find that on my Patreon. And that's it, not only for this video, but also for the whole series of building the indie mill. I'm kind of happy and also kind of sad because I really enjoyed making those videos. But of course, that's not the end of indie mill because right now I just can't wait to start using this machine for my future projects. I already have like a long list of things that I want to make with indie mill and share that on my YouTube channel. If you want to build your own indie mill, check out the links in the description to industry.cc. If you want to get the instruction and support my channel that way, there is also a link for that. There is a link to my Patreon where you can also support my work. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out other videos about indie mill. Uh, and that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching. Happy making. Bye.